This information is being presented as a joint project of two Project Impact communities. The information is intended to act as a guide in your decision-making process during coastal storm events. The probability of a major hurricane hitting some area like Long Island is going to be extremely small, but in the case of Long Island, it has happened in the past and it will happen again in the future. These are scenes from the great hurricanes of the 1930s and 40s that ravaged most of Long Island. Even more frequent are the dreaded nor'easters that often cause flooding, like this. But it is the storm surge from hurricanes that poses the greatest risk to life and property. This is Long Island today, near Freeport, not a hurricane in sight. Yet flooding from hurricanes and northeasters has been a constant problem for residents of this region. Even the right lunar cycle can trigger minor street flooding, much less a hurricane or powerful northeaster. But folks up here have been doing something to reduce the impacts of repeated flooding. It's called Project Impact. Project Impact has been about building a disaster resistant community. We've been trying to get people to realize that the threat of storms is a real threat up here. Uh, we haven't had a major storm in several years, so people kind of get comfortable and they feel that a big storm is going to go to North Carolina or to Florida and not going to go after them. And uh, Project Impact is our way of trying to get the message to people that they are in harm's way here on the coast of Long Island and uh, uh, flooding is a real problem. It can happen in the summer during a hurricane, it can happen during the winter during a nor'easter. Once the storm passes and the tide goes down, no one wants to be in a shelter. People want to be able to get back into their home. That's one of the most important things, uh, being having something to go back to. So that's why we're building a disaster resistant community by strengthening the, the, the structures in the community as they exist today. To begin the process of learning about storm surge, we spent the day with our sponsor, State Farm Insurance. Hi, my name is Craig Parker. And I'm Ryan Salonia from State Farm Insurance. Today we want to talk about hurricanes, northeasters, and their causes and effects. And more importantly, what you as a homeowner can do to mitigate losses in the event of a catastrophe. That's right. This area is not immune to hurricanes. So let's start with some hurricane basics. Hurricanes have four main hazards that you should be concerned with. The damaging wind that grabs most of the headlines. A storm surge that historically has caused more death and destruction than any other hurricane effect. Flooding rain that has also caused incredible destruction and loss of life, even hundreds of miles from the coast. And finally, hurricanes are known to spawn small tornadoes that only add to the arsenal of dangerous effects. Hurricanes have a season when they are most likely to form. This period lasts from June 1st until November 30th each and every year. The areas that we monitor are the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. It is common to see hurricanes travel in a near straight line from the east towards the west across the Atlantic. Some make it to the Gulf of Mexico, threatening areas from Florida to Texas. But the ones that give us all the headache are those that track right up the east coast, and they can do so in quite a hurry. The one main ingredient that a hurricane needs in order to form and survive is ocean water temperatures of at least 80 degrees or higher. This provides the fuel for a hurricane, and the warmer the water, the more potential energy is available. Once the ocean is warm enough, we look for tropical disturbances, like these colorful blobs of clouds exiting the west coast of Africa. And if the upper level winds are blowing in the same direction as these tropical disturbances, then something has a chance to develop. As long as conditions are favorable, a tropical depression may form, the first stage of a hurricane with winds of up to 38 miles per hour. Next, the depression becomes a named tropical storm with winds ranging from 39 miles per hour to 73 miles per hour and no defined eye, not yet. Finally, when conditions favor, a hurricane will be truly a hurricane once winds around the center reach 74 miles per hour or higher. 
Some hurricanes have winds well over 100 miles per hour. It is the hurricane that produces the worst of what is called storm surge. To understand storm surge, we visited Max Mayfield, director of the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. Storm surge is really a function of two things primarily, the intensity of the hurricane and the slope of the continental shelf. So anytime you increase that intensity, you're going to have a higher storm surge and it's very critical on the path that the hurricane takes and even with the technology that we have today, we do have some uncertainties in that uh, track forecast and we really hope people understand that. As Director Mayfield noted, storm surge is a direct function of three main parameters, the intensity of the hurricane, the slope of the continental shelf, and the exact track or path that the hurricane takes. Northeasters also cause storm surge, but their effects can last for more than a day or two. Contrast this with a hurricane that is usually through our area in a matter of hours. Northeasters also have other features that distinguish them from hurricanes. Hurricanes have a June through November season, whereas Northeasters typically form from November through March. Hurricanes are born because of heat and humidity that must be dispersed out of the tropics. Northeasters are more a function of warm and cold air masses colliding over the relatively warm Atlantic waters. And as we mentioned, hurricanes are quick to move in and out of our region, whereas a Northeaster can hang around for more than two days, really allowing the water to pile up and cause flooding. But the two phenomena are closely connected in one very important manner. We're here with Jay Tansky from the New York Sea Grant Program. Jay, can you tell us a little bit about the tides and how they interact with hurricanes and nor'easters? Well, the tides are very important because they can determine how high the floodwaters associated with the storm are going to be. Here on Long Island, we have what are called semi-diurnal tides. That means the tide rises and falls twice a day. In this area we're at now, the tidal range, that's the difference between the high tide and the low tide, is about five feet. It means at low tide, uh, you can say that's at zero feet and at high tide you have an elevation of five feet. Now say we have a storm that comes through and has a storm surge of five feet. If that storm hits at low tide, the flood tides or the storm tide is going to be five feet, which is essentially the high, normal high tide. So it's not going to cause much of a problem. But if that storm does come through at high tide, then you have a tide of five feet plus the storm surge of five feet, which gives you a storm tide of ten feet. That's when you can really start having problems. So it's that storm tide are the effects of the tides and the storm surge combined that's very important when you're talking about uh, hazard mitigation, uh, emergency response, and flooding problems on our coastline. To visualize what Jay Tansky described, we've taken an actual photograph of a canal in Freeport while at low tide. Next, we added our own digital water to simulate the low tide level. Then we bring the water up around two and a half feet to mean tide or halfway between low and high tide. Now if we bring the water up another two and a half feet or so, we see the water level at a normal high tide. Now that we have examined a few hurricane basics and taken a look at the normal tide cycles, it's time to define our main threat, storm surge. By definition, storm surge is an abnormal rise in the sea level accompanying a hurricane or other intense storm, and whose height is the difference between the observed level of the sea surface and the level that would have occurred in the absence of the cyclone. This is basically saying that the strong winds of a hurricane or other intense storm can literally pile the water up against the coastline. A northeaster also produces a storm surge that is mostly a function of the water being piled up against the coast by prolonged onshore winds. Storm surge is not a large tidal wave. It is a steady rise in the elevation of the water level. At the coast, it will look something like this with battering waves. In our region, it looks more like this. A steady rise in the water level as the hurricane or other coastal storm closes in. There is very little wave action, just a steady rise in the overall water level that can vary from storm to storm and whether or not the storm strikes at high, mean, or low tide. Assuming these exposures, what can be done to reduce losses associated with these events? The word is mitigation. Let us first take a look at the consequences of taking no action to reduce loss. 
In this computer animation, we can simulate the effects of a storm surge flood and its damage to unprotected property. Notice that as the wind speed increases and the water level rises, the dollar amount of damage also goes up until the home is a total loss. We can also simulate the same effects on a propane tank or fuel oil tank. As the water level rises, the tank is overcome and easily pops loose, quickly becoming a dangerous piece of floating debris. By contrast, a homeowner can implement certain practices to help reduce loss. There's no guarantee that mitigation strategies will eliminate loss and damage, but simple elevation and securing methods can at least minimize the damage. Even an entire home can become more disaster resistant by proper elevation, storm shutters, tree trimming, and proper dock and pier construction. This all in an effort to reduce the amount of damage that a coastal storm inflicts. One real-life example of such a success story is that of Freeport resident Mr. Donald Brown. His home used to sit with the front door at street level, vulnerable to storm surge. Now, it's a different story. Well, I'm not looking forward to the next disaster, but I'm prepared for it now. Huh. They re-engineered uh, it with the I-beams. Right. And that came up that much more. So okay. it's uh, closer to seven feet, actually. Wow. So that door right there that used to be at, right there on the ground. At street level, that's right. Wow. And now look at it. I mean, we got it. It's up high. And it's, how high did they raise you up off the... the it's close to seven feet higher than it was. There have been times when I've had a foot and a half of water in the, on the ground floor before we raised it. Before you couldn't walk under there, now you can. Right. So the benefit is you get a crawl space. Yeah. Well, you get a crawl space. <laughs> the house was designed per uh, FEMA guidelines for the vent opening, so hydrostatic and hydrodynamic loads. Uh, so the foundation will not move when there's a storm surge. The water will go in and it will be able to come out um, and equalize the pressure on the interior and exterior of that foundation. Why don't you tell us what Project Impact is doing here? Well, Project Impact is all about mitigation, preparedness, being able to take action before the storm to limit damage and prevent injuries to your family and your loved ones. For example, we've done elevation projects where we literally lift the home up above the flood level. We've done projects where we've improved the drainage system so that the water coming in with the surge tides doesn't get pushed into the drainage system and up into the streets and public awareness programs where we teach people how to be prepared and how to protect themselves. Now that we have examined hurricanes and northeasters and most importantly the concept of mitigation, how do we best prepare for this hurricane season? To get the answer we talked with Director Mayfield again. I always worry about people being prepared and if you've been hit by a hurricane, especially a major hurricane recently, uh, like the folks on the North Carolina coast, I'm not so worried about them. They know what a hurricane is all about. But there are a lot of other people who don't have a very good memory of what a hurricane can do. And even here in South Florida, it's been 10 years now since Hurricane Andrew hit down here. And I think our memories are pretty short and uh, you bet that's a big concern I have that people uh, remember what a hurricane can do and all the hazards associated with the hurricane. The first thing you need to know is to assess your vulnerability. You need to understand which hazards you're uh, subject to. That includes the storm surge, the strong winds, the heavy uh, inland freshwater flooding, uh, and the tornadoes, and then develop a plan accordingly. Most coastal counties, you can go to either the Weather Service Office or the Emergency Management Office for your county and have a pretty good uh, idea of how to make a hurricane plan. You can find out if you're in an evacuation zone. That's the number one thing you need to do is assess your vulnerability, find out if you're in an evacuation zone or not. If you're in an evacuation zone, you need to have in your hurricane plan uh, the location of where you'll go to shelter. You need to know in advance where you're going to go and how you'll get there, and if you're told to go, go immediately. 
uh, even if you're outside that evacuation zone, you still need to have the hurricane plan. You need to have the storm shutters, the drinking water, the extra medication, uh, things like that, flashlights, batteries, radios, and have all that on hand, you know, before the hurricane gets here. Don't wait for the hurricane to come knocking at your door before you make your preparations. If you're told to evacuate, do so immediately. If you're not told to evacuate, don't add to the traffic congestion. Go ahead and stay in your house or stay in a shelter uh, nearby. Don't add to this possible gridlock. Dennis, we've covered a lot today. We sure have, Craig. And it's all real important information, and we hope you take it very seriously. We'd like to see you use mitigation in your home to protect your home, your family, and your property from the damages of wind and surge from these coastal storms. And we'd like to thank State Farm Insurance for all the help in making this possible. Yes, I thank you for all your efforts. At State Farm Insurance, we not only sell the promise, but keep the promise. That is why we are out here in the community helping to protect you, your family, and your assets. If you want additional information on how to protect yourself from hurricanes, nor'easters, and other damage that could occur to your personal property or homes, log on to statefarm.com or contact your local State Farm agent who can provide you with further information.